Welcome to number one crude mistakes. And why is it so silent here? Well, I'm doing the intro before I'm inviting any of the others in. Kind of takes the pressure off. Now with us today, it's going to be Glenn from number one projects and KJ from crude but efficient. And this is myself, Hovar, from behind the mistakes. All three are brilliant YouTubers just hanging around, having fun, and hoping that you will join us for the ride. Now, let's see if I can't invite the others in. There, we have sent the invite, and then we'll see who pops up first. I'm thinking Glenn, then KJ, a good second. Although, we are all on the podium tonight, so it's gonna be good. Well, still alone, talking to myself, not getting awkward at all. And smart <laughs> as I am, I already pressed recording before you guys came here. Oh, you cheeky bastard. Yeah, I, I also did the intro, taking the pressure off not having you here. So it's, uh, it's going to be a surprise for all of us, I guess. <laughs> so that's what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> With all those countdowns, that was just uh, the number of times you had to redo the intro. <laughs> well, when the episodes are uploaded, you will see that uh, this is now named episode 5.3. So there were two failed attempts <laughs> at the intro <laughs> all by myself. <laughs> so st stumbled over the starting line there. So yeah, how's your week gone? Any excitement? No excitement on my part, although I have started YouTube in this week. Ooh. I've started Ooh. filming. Back on it. Nice. Yep. yep. I have spent probably about two and a half hours filming. I've got about one and a half minutes edit out of that. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, and... so 20 second clip there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I've cut one sheet of plywood into four. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what woodworking is all about? I mean, <laughs> cutting something, gluing it together, and then sanding it, and then putting some oil on, and then rinse and repeat. <laughs> Making something worse in hope that it will get better in the end. I know, but two and a half hours for one piece of plywood into four pieces is ridiculous, isn't it? What What's this, the plate that you, you waited for the perfect circumstances to film this? Uh, or did you forget I, about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I did, I did get the, I did get some nice weather on Friday, and that's when I started. That, yeah, that all worked out nicely, I think. But that took some time, making it look like I was just delivering the plywood to my house for some reason was a shot I wanted to get in, but it took forever. <laughs> well, sometimes you get those IDs that you just can't get rid of, and you have to do it even when it feels silly in the moment, that's and it. afterwards as well. <laughs> What about you, Havard? What have you been up to this week? Well, it's been a busy week, uh, but it's been a good one. I uh, I entered the Scrapwood Challenge, like, on impulse one evening. I got an idea and I just recorded and then I'm guessing I'm entering now. <laughs> and, uh, of course, that's the, the thing I need now before uh, the Halloween build, <laughs> which I haven't even <laughs> begun cutting anything so um yeah there's that so in in typical of our fashion have you got to wait for parts to come for your scrapwood challenge have the parts come for your halloween yeah. project as well and of course i also i think i i jumped over a project or postponed it maybe um i always wanted to build my own tool chest for all my electrical mm. tools and I've seen a lot of inspiration but when I try to sketch down how I want the layout to be I get a new tool and then I have to rethink it and then I realized I'm gonna be doing this until the day I die um, just planning for something but <laughs> never getting there and I realized the thing I need to do is to just start using something to learn what it is that I actually need so I found on sale this uh, standard metal drawer uh, tool chest 
thingy and then I just took the lid off to put the soldering iron and everything on top and just moved all my tools in there and realized it's not big enough for the tools I have. So I need a bigger one at least. So I nailed that. <laughs> but now I'm going to start using it and figuring out what do I use the most? Do I Can I put some of the things in deep storage and so on? So it's a it's a design process by buying some other shop infrastructure. So yeah, it's a, it's a weird approach, but we'll see if it works. Versatility uh, for tool storage is a tricky business, isn't it? That's what this project's all about for me that I'm on at the mm. moment. Yeah, I couldn't figure out one way to hang my tools on the wall. It's got to be a versatile system that I can change around and live with for a while and then pro probably change again. So is it uh, something for the drills or other tools? Something just for the workshop, just for the, the stuff that you want and you use all the time. So it's a whiskey dispenser. So for me, that <laughs> it's a bar. <laughs> I've realized for me the uh, if I'll have an EDC carriage pouch or something, it would be filled with Q-tips. I found myself using that for everything glue related. So uh, yeah, my my EDC is packed in my van every day. <laughs> I mean, your van is probably your EDC. That's the yeah. one. Aren't you yeah, supposed to be able to <laughs> carry your everyday carry? <laughs> EDD, everyday drive? No, everyday. <laughs> my, my uncle has a van and he just calls it the tool chest and he has for years. Yeah. And uh, it's been different brands through all the years, but it's still called the tool chest. <laughs> yeah, that's why you have a van, but... I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's pointless not to, I guess. But since you're on to videos, I mean, you, KJ, you just posted one yesterday out of the blue. Yeah, blame. yeah, I just I finally, finally managed to, to get it done. Uh, as I said before, yeah, it, was, it was lacking something. And then I realized that I haven't really mentioned the podcast in a, in a video. So just let's just, just chuck that in there. <laughs> um, so I did an uh, awfully complicated way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I saw you dropped it and then I couldn't watch it until later at night. And of course, I never thought I'd look forward to looking at someone else's pants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was really but, nice. But in part it... I lear learned something as well. Oh, yeah, uh, well, I, you shouldn't really take my, my approach uh, as the way to go it's it's kind of a kind of following the instructions but still don't uh so <laughs> I, it's, it's the cheap ass version where you where you try to use up as much of the dye as possible uh, but i mean isn't that being a maker you see something and you think i can do that and you botch it completely and end up with something completely different yeah. <laughs> but it works yeah, I, mean, I mean the instructions uh, had one uh, one amount for 40 degrees and one one amount for 60 degrees. And I thought, well, let's do it at 50 degrees. That's in the middle. <laughs> That's probably good <laughs> enough. And, and... That's a sensible. I'm really impressed you read the instructions at all. That's something I definitely wouldn't have done. But I've done something, I mean, not dishwasher, but washing machine related this weekend. I, I see there is a, a trending theme on, at least on, Instagram, where people are realizing that dry cleaning is actually not dry. <laughs> it's like they do wash your clothes, but in other substances than water. Yeah. And then people have started, well, will my clothes be ruined if I put them in the washing machine and just wash them as a regular? Turns out, no. So I, um, I washed my suit this week on the, the regular cycle and it didn't disappear magically, and uh, it came out fine <laughs> and clean. Well, I guess that depends on what material it's made of. I mean... Yeah, if it had been made out of paper, it definitely yeah. would have survived. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it's made out of fabric, I think. <laughs> uh, it, it feels very fabric-y when I put it on, at least. Well, you know that you can get into more detail than that. <laughs> I mean, a, a fully <laughs> yeah. woolen uh, suit, that might not take so kindly to that. Well, that depends on the temperature, I guess. 
Welcome to the Washcast. <laughs> I started thinking about it that uh, our friend Mr. Mello also did a washing machine related uh, topic this yeah, week. Just, so I there seems to be something in the water. <laughs> you, you say our friend Mr. Mello. Do you mean our new in- intern? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sanding loving video editor. Yeah. Very much unpaid yeah. intern. We didn't mention. <laughs> yeah, we didn't need to specify that very much. <laughs> we we didn't mention any money did we last week. No, not at all. I mean it's it's the experience. And exposure. Yeah. <laughs> and exposure, yeah. <laughs> He's got more subscribers than yeah, me, yeah. KJ. <laughs> let's not go into details. Uh, let's get back to your video. Uh so I I thought you'd done some uh, cracking work on that video. I thought the the shots and the angles and the humor and everything I thought were just brilliant. You know, I'm not particularly interested in dyeing clothes, but the way you put it together, I thought you made it really, very really enjoyable Thanks. to watch. Yeah. It, I like, yeah. I like the wardrobe and, sequence. That was uh, really impressive. Yeah. Uh, I need to up my game wardrobe wise. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Although like in the in the color department, you still have some uh, some possibilities to explore. But well, uh, I found my niche yeah. and, and double down on it. <laughs> I I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, that's going to be the hook for the podcast. I have questions. When, <laughs> <laughs> when you jumped into, I think it was the last suit, and you said fancy dress. Is it fancy as in you go to a party and you dress up as Batman? Or is it fancy if you go to a fancy ball or something like that? A more more fancy as in a, a ball. Yeah? Is that traditional Swedish fancy? Uh, in uh, academic, academia, it's called. Uh, it is. Um, so oh, when okay. I was at, at uni, we had a lot of... We took every opportunity to to dress up uh so so you did and then you 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 bite the bullet and and buy uh is it called a frock or some a coattails i don't know frock yeah frock coat uh and then yeah. when you when you spend uh, that's about 500 pounds or something like that on a piece of clothing then you want to use it as much as much as possible because every time you use it the the price per use goes down so yeah, at, at the I mean the first time you you get it, it takes about half an hour to put it on because you have to remember all the straps and things. And I think I was yeah, yeah. at my peak stage, I was down to like a minute and a half or something like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's pa- fantastic. Yeah, and we we do. even had so, a, a yeah. little club. Uh, at my university, uh, where we where we dressed up in fancy dress and we went bowling, went to a shooting range, went to IKEA, <laughs> that sort of thing, and it always brought brought a smile to everyone's face. I'll bet. <laughs> I'm thinking back to if we're rewinding this recording for a few minutes. I probably said it myself. I know it, but I can't really correct myself. But I say dress as well. But basically, dress is the well traditional woman garment, isn't it? And then it's a suit, or is it yeah. a dress? Can it be a dress? A, or a, a man suit, can or... dress up. Yeah, dress up. I is mean, the... a man can a man can wear a dress or a frock in your case, <laughs> KJ. But it's um, you know, it's a it's a. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it is, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's a man dressed as a woman, basically. If you do. <laughs> So uh, just uh, one other thing on your clothing, because I, you know, I asked Havard lots of questions on his wardrobe last week and last week as well. <laughs> Do you buy your jeans from AliExpress? Because who needs to buy that many pairs of jeans? No. <laughs> but but <laughs> did you uh, buy the no, bulk? <laughs> this is accumulated over. I think the oldest one I still wear, or is about. 20, not 25 years old, but something like that. I do not throw things okay. away lightly. 
my clothes fall off me in the end. They're just the good tatters. thing with, with uh, all wearing all black that it's really easy to hide the patches. Yeah, I, I thought the yeah. same when I saw you lining them up to show the different shades of not gray but black. I, I have. I do have two jeans, I think, and some work pants and so on. And as you, Glenn, I'm, I wear them until they fall off me. And then I realize, oh, I need to go to this store. And then I almost yeah. have to go there in my trousers <laughs> doing a shopping run. Am I the only person with <laughs> like... with multiples? I mean, I think I have, <laughs> I have four work pants and uh, uh, what is it? What's that? Six pairs of jeans and almost the same pairs of uh, of shorts and like four or five a little bit fancier trousers as well so yeah it's just shaved. yeah well i'm aspiring to be and i i always want to get there but well things tend to get I in mean, the way buying clothes <laughs> is rather boring extremely <laughs> so then i try to hold on to mine as long as possible I, I'm, of course, lucky because I don't go into an office and whatnot every day. I, um, I only need to own one suit, which is my basically my weddings and my funeral suit. <laughs> and doesn't get worn any other time. I have one tie. and No, that that's a lie. I got another tie <laughs> as a gift from my company, but I never used it. I think I threw it away. I'm not sure. You have one good tie. So I, have, I have one good tie. And it was actually bought at a store selling Disney artifacts in Scarborough that time. <laughs> God knows how many years ago. And it's a, it's a black tie, but like at the bottom, it's a picture of Daffy Duck. <laughs> but the really nice thing is when you, Glenn, say you have a funeral and a party suit all in one, <laughs> I have the same with that tie. Because when the right. suit jacket is on, it's covering up Daffy Duck. So I've used it to funerals and it's all sad and everything. And then when you go to the, like the after party where people lightening up and you start telling all the stories from uh, when the main character was alive, then the jacket comes off and then it's a more lighthearted mood. <laughs> I was giggling as you said, you've only got one tie because I have got only one suit, but I must have 17 ties. <laughs> That's how you mix it up. Yeah, if you switch the ties, then you have a completely new outfit, basically. So, yeah, that works. And just <laughs> change the shirt as well. Have a couple in different colors, <laughs> then no one will know. Um, but I actually got some uh, some uh, some more filming done this weekend. Um, so I have almost... Well, I've, I've finished the build uh, for my next video, uh, but uh, that one requires... Uh, a smash part uh, at the end. So I have to record that as well. Fantastic. A so smash part of the build? or Using the build to smash stuff, to uh, to prove its function. Okay, yeah. mm. Interesting. <laughs> so I've seen you do that with axes yeah, before, yeah. KJ. Yeah. So I'm going to ask, whenever you say you've done some filming or you're working on something, I always ask, do we get a little insight as to what it is? And I'm pretty sure I know what the answer is, but <laughs> uh -huh. I'm going to ask it anyway. Did we get any insights as to what this project well, about? Well, it's, uh, it's still the, the same project as before. The What did we call it? The reimagining of a medieval weapon. Ah, okay. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah, the balls. Yeah. yeah. Rem remember <laughs> that one. Yeah. The medieval yes. balls. Yes. Um, <laughs> we'll see if I've, I've gone a bit too far on, on that subject. But yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's done now at least. <laughs> so... Now we're just gonna see if it can, if I can string together the the the, the video clips into something coherent. Do you have to uh, when we see the smash scene? Are you gonna be dressed head to toe in a suit of armor or? It if I had one, I would. <laughs> I have been <laughs> contemplating how much PPE I should wear, unless something goes goes wrong. Or well, maybe you could wear your fancy suit. <laughs> Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm, well. Yeah. <laughs> I look really good in a dress. I, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. No one is questioning that. 
<laughs> then why are you laughing? I don't know. And I promise it's just soda in the can. <laughs> <laughs> How do you look in a dress of art? Well, 20 years ago, I could pull it off. Uh, yeah. uh, both uh, dress and high heels. Uh, but, uh, yeah, well, since I stopped doing amateur theater, it's been, well, less time spent in dresses. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I know how to put them on. High heels are really, really tough for me. Well, the added height does not do me well. I mean, it, it's it's not the high heels that's your issue, but the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, have, I have poor balance as it is. So, so adding two inches is not an improvement. I don't think they make high heels in my size. I've not tried. Well, you haven't uh, well, looked hard enough. Then, uh, <laughs> well, I'll I'll check with AliExpress after the podcast. <laughs> I guess we'll find find a few alternatives. In four weeks, Glenn get a surprise package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already have his address after exchanging stickers. So, uh... a couple of years ago, we went to a uh, Halloween party, and um, my wife went as a witch, and I think I was probably went as a zombie. And um, after quite a few drinks, I end, we ended up sw- switching outfits. So I had the witch's dress on. So there is a photo of me. I look pretty good in one, I think. <laughs> I can pull it off. <laughs> I think it's mostly attitude. Yeah. <laughs> and confidence. Yeah. You've, just, you've just got to wear <laughs> <own> it. <Yeah. laughs> oh, dear. So I was listening to a, um, a an old episode of a podcast last week. And they uh, had some interesting stats, which I thought, what episode are we on now? Episode five? Yeah. Yeah. So their, their stats were that uh, 80% of uh, podcasts don't make it past eight episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and 97% of podcasts fail before episode 10. So I just thought I'd take this opportunity to ask you guys how you're finding doing the podcast. Are you still enjoying it? My first reaction is, you couldn't wait with that information to after <laughs> said amount of episodes. <laughs> well, they, when I was listening to the, when he revealed that fact, they were on episode 40. And I thought, well, where's the funny wait until then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so you have given your answer. Uh, since you're pulling up stats already, <laughs> you don't have high expectations. Well, uh, oh, I do. at my end, I feel it's... Uh, Getting better every time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still enjoying myself, I promise. After the initial blip with the um, editing, when I, I thought I might cry that first time I tried editing, um, I'm all right with it now. I quite like it. You guys are, you know, I'm warming up to you both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking speaking of crying, we'll get back to that. But KJ, how, how, how are you holding up? Yeah, I, I think it's it's great. I mean the the everything uh, everything about this is really nice uh, having people to to chat to about these specific things and having a regular check in every week. I mean the the only downside is the the added workload, but it actually takes time uh, time that is not. The, I mean this is the fun part chatting with you and yeah. and uh, and mm-hmm. sending messages and all of that but then we have everything behind the scenes that takes up a couple of valuable hours a week and i mean that's but i mean you can't only eat dessert i guess <laughs> i think that's the beauty of how we've got things set up actually you know taking it in turns in the edit it's my turn this week, but I know after you know my turn, I've got a couple of weeks off and I can relax. And so, you know, for the next couple of times, I can just chat to you, to, you two, and have no worries, really. Yeah. yeah. So I've got, I've got no regrets. So no regrets on for either one of you on anything. No, no not so at all. Far? So that's why no. you keep looking at the time and making the cutoff signal. You want a short episode <laughs> to edit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap it up, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's getting late. <laughs> Saturday is coming awfully quickly. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I found myself really enjoying the, the edit, 
but it's really nice to just have to do it every every th- third week because if i had to do it every week then then i think i would feel a bit burned out so yeah this this setup is really yeah. great yeah same here once every third week is it's nice and then you also have the backup if something comes up there's always someone who can do the edit as well so it's nice to have well what's it called distributed responsibility yeah Oh, that'll do. <laughs> that'll do. That was it. That's a wrap. See you next week. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> <sighs> well, that being said, uh, it's, maybe it's a teaser. Um, I have the same experience as you, KJ. Uh, I've actually gotten to interact with people through the podcast, which I probably wouldn't have been interacted with otherwise and it's ended up in a collaboration Ooh. I, but i can't tell you who i can't tell you what it is can um, you tell us when approximately no no i can't but we have been exchanging ideas and i've gotten now a 3d file uh, for uh, reviewing the design so it's uh, it's coming along uh, faster than i would have expect it but that's nice Nice. so that's another speed bump in the road so uh, but that will end up as a youtube video so that's uh, more like a sidetrack rather than a speed bump you two are absolutely fantastic aren't you at spinning a good story but without actually saying anything (laughs) 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 yeah i could even sweeten it it's uh you might be involved. <laughs> <laughs> what, me? Me or KJ? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess you'll have to find out then. <laughs> and here I thought I was a tease. <laughs> <laughs> kind of glad I've got cameras on the front of the house now. <laughs> sneaking up on me. <laughs> so, yeah. So that, that's it then. No more information on that from you today. No, I think that's a wrap from my side. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Enough teasing. Cool. I've always wanted to do uh, do some kind of collaboration, but it never. There's never been uh, been an opportunity. Well, it's the same here. And oh, sorry, we're supposed <laughs> to jump in. <here>, okay? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> It's just a sad realization. We'll cut the episode. There. <laughs> that's going to be so good. <laughs> Uh, oh. The giggle hour was last episode. <laughs> Thought we got all that out. No, but I mean, it's 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 really hard to 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 fit to fit the collab in as well. So I, it's not something I've been actively searching after either. So in that sense, it it's kind of good because when you when you have a a, a lot of ideas already, uh, it's kind of hard when you get when you get an opportunity that you really can't turn down yeah, and have to reshuffle right. your, your plan, as it sounds like you have been doing quite a lot. But I haven't had, well, if we don't think too much about the upcoming <laughs> Halloween build, <laughs> that... uh, I have no specific <laughs> deadline on the other things. And I thought I'd do a bit of Glenn. So when the opportunity presented itself, it's like, yeah, I'll just jump in. I mean, don't overthink it. So uh, then we'll see what the result will be <laughs> of that approach. I don't know how I could manage a, um, a collab with anybody unless they, you know, they live just up the street or something. I'm not sure how you'd work it out. I mean, you can do cameos in people's videos, but to build something together, you need to surely you need to physically get together, don't you? So yeah, or if you you have the Royal Mail, so. <laughs> but it's a gamble, though. Yeah. <laughs> Sp- spending yeah. time and money on a prize item and handing it over to the postal services and <laughs> praying that it even gets there. You have there. to make spares. <laughs> yeah. It, it cost me £3.50 just to send some stickers to you, Evan. I don't know. Yeah. You know, anything bigger than that's going to be. Yeah, shit, that's crazy. I, I set yeah. up. A while back, I set up an Etsy shop, just selling some uh, small items. 
and the shipment was killing it. Yeah. So unless you have some collaborations, I mean, if you're making t-shirts or whatnot, then you have print shops in various locations to keep the shipping yeah. down. But when you're actually making stuff yourself in your workshop and then somebody from Ohio says, oh, I would like one. And then <laughs> hmm, it costs two pounds to make and it costs 40 pounds to send it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. insane. So what were you selling in the Etsy shop? It was a uh, oak wall clock and a table oh, clock. Nice. And then I think we talked about it earlier, the Star Wars uh, knockoff oh, yeah. uh, Christmas ornaments. Yeah. That wasn't named anything Star Warsy, but uh, <laughs> yeah, sold a few of those, and then I started getting cold feet. <laughs> <laughs> so there are some very exclusive uh, Christmas tree ornaments out there, and then I have a box here of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have it here. Okay, don't forget to use your words. Yeah, isn't that just to describe it? <laughs> yeah, I actually. Yeah, that being said, I sold out of the Stormtrooper, oh, so I have the, um, this is the the Christmas Raider. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fantastic. And then, of course, it's the... Or the uh, evil Darth Vader with the... The, the, Chris, the Christmas star. Ah, yes. I mean, the, back, nice. the background is crappy. Let's uh, try uh, like this, and you can get like the feel of yeah. the... Yeah. I really like the Santa hat on the, on the Darth Vader really figure yeah i saw someone doing that on the stormtrooper for like a clip art or something and then i thought "Ooh, i could do that in wood and then darth vader was a far cooler design working with so of course we'll get some uh, photos on the instagram of those things yeah we'll put out some we, pictures we, of the we love a visual on this podcast not star we? wars related uh, <laughs> christmas paraphernalia yeah <laughs> It was the knockoff film, wasn't there, um, years ago? And the instead of Darth Vader, was he called yeah, Dark Space Helmet? Balls. Yeah, the that's the, the one. one. <laughs> it's rather yeah. weird, but I, charming. I, I, I'm not sure if it was that one, but they actually cleared it with LucasArts. And they said that they could basically like spoof everything, but they needed to change the names and so on. But the Han Solo character... They were not allowed to dress him as Han Solo in the movie because it was something about his appearance being iconical. So then they said, oh, no, we we based him off of Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. Oh, brilliant. Might not be a true story, but it's a, but it's a good one. It's a good one. So yeah, that's the plan. Uh, realizing also that Christmas is getting closer. I also have a Christmas project coming up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, same. We'll see. I just shut Christmas out. Mentally or? <laughs> <laughs> Mentally. <laughs> Mentally, I just shut Christmas out. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to the time off work, but um, yeah, not, not that bothered about all the fuss of it all no. nowadays. Well, for me, it's the other way around. After I got kids, I really got the Christmas spirit again. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the oof, the run-up, which has already started uh, in the shops and everything, that's, I really like to just keep that on a down low until you actually get to Christmas, and then you can do the whole Christmas charades and then pack it down again rather quickly after New Year's. <laughs> I think it was uh, working in retail that ruined it for me. Oh, uh, yeah. I can see yeah. that. <laughs> you'd, you'd start, new stock would start arriving around about June, July time. Yeah. <laughs> all to be priced up and put away. And then, you know, September comes, you start getting it all out again. I did used to enjoy selling um, Christmas trees, though. That was good mm. fun. Used to, you know, it's the only time of year you could sell a dead plant to a customer. <laughs> And they'd be really, really happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have the tradition of of going home to to my parents and going out in the in the woods and cutting down uh, our own Christmas tree, which is 
always always nice. a fun thing to do with the kids as well. Tell me the in laws have got a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my father has, has several uh, chainsaws, so that's that's uh. no problem. <laughs> but uh, we we need uh, a, a taller Christmas tree because where where we put it, it's almost four meters ceiling height. So naturally, we we use all of it. So we generally go for a, a a tree that's about three and a half meters tall or something like that. Crikey! Yeah, it's a big tree. Uh, you have to. We we usually put in yeah. two two strings of light. Um, so yeah, it's a good job they've got you to get that star uh, yeah. on the top, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I really wanted to do the Colin first stunt. Yeah, where we get a giant tree and just put the top outside on the roof. Um, it would really look nice from the outside, how our living room is located towards the neighbors. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's a wonderfully silly way to do it. We were um, we tempted at the weekend, KJ, to get your father in with the chainsaw. You had a little incident, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that that could have could have been nice. Yeah, another another tree. Uh, blew down um, and uh, the council took about one and a half days actually to clear it out and uh, our driveway was totally blocked so it wasn't like I could drive to the store and buy a chainsaw either so we were we were pretty stuck <laughs> so I, I was just thinking damn it Glenn was right I should have bought a chainsaw the last time I needed one but yeah now it's cleared out I was only surprised that you didn't have one because I, I just figured you'd have a log burner and whatnot. No, home. no, we're not. Yeah, I thought we're yeah. not burners. So. Oh, okay. So the uh, chainsaw was a little bit of a regret, was it? <laughs> yeah, just for that time. So, uh, what are you going to do with all those logs on your driveway? Are you going to haul them back into? The I hope again? that Maybe someone like can pick, pick them up this time, <laughs> but. I, I guess that they're counting on that someone who has a log burner uh, steals them so they don't have to take care of them because they're cheaper. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. At least. I mean, you can, dri- you can drive them over here. I mean, the, the last two winters after, well, everything basically, the the price for electricity has skyrocketed in Norway. We have always been historically low. Yeah, but same here. Now people are really stocking up on firewood, and the, the prices has tripled what is normal. So, uh, I'll fill my suitcase for next weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're coming over here, so maybe you should drive and put a trailer on and make it a make it a road trip. You could probably make that into a movie. I mean, that's that that would be a nice movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I already booked my booked my train tickets. Yeah, hmm. oh, but if you drove, you could put national lampoons in front of the <laughs> title on your on your YouTube video. That just make it so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. I should make a video. I mean, anything Christmas related should sell, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> on that being said, I had the gingerbread tradition coming up so yeah. oh, jesus christ it's really stacking <laughs> i'm looking at the calendar it's it's almost christmas and i really have to have to finish my christmas project early because it's the foot for the christmas tree so if i don't have it we don't have anywhere to put the christmas tree because we broke it last year and i said well, i'm gonna make one and i bought materials in I mean, late spring or something like that. So I've been having them around the workshop, moving them around. So I have to actually <laughs> get down and and actually do it as well. So I can't actually believe it. You've just actually revealed what you're going yeah. to do on a project. <laughs> <laughs> we tricked him in yeah. the end. <laughs> I felt like I, I couldn't be coy with one more thing. Then Glenn would just start crying. How long does it take you to get over to uh, Norway? Uh, a little over five hours with train. The the fastest one. Crikey. 
Yeah, and four of those hours are that. after passing the border to Norway because the train lines here are shitty. <laughs> and <laughs> the signal system are constantly broken. So, uh, yeah. Good to know. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make a dent to my watch later on, on YouTube. Actually get it down to two figures at least. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't really see how I can do that. Um, it just keeps growing. And now, of course, we are watching only murders in the building. Mm, um, that's a good show. And then, of course, they they now launched a new season of Loki. Yeah. And I mean, I, I I think we have used three weeks now on one episode of Only Murders in the Building. So we will never catch up. <laughs> so <it's>, uh... <laughs> you are not dedicated <laughs> enough. <Yeah>. I mean. <laughs> well, um... is that a Scandinavian program? No, American. Yeah. It's really f- f- it. feel good. Feel good murder. Yeah, <laughs> feel good murder <laughs> podcast, but it is a television yeah. show. But I think they're really, <laughs> al- al- although fictitious. So yeah, <laughs> I tr- I think it's really good. Very much as this po- podcast, we are really th- three accountants just taking on personas as YouTubers <laughs> doing woodworking, <laughs> loosely basing <laughs> what we are saying on what we have seen on YouTube. Others talk about. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe maybe for real we could start up a podcast on accountancy <laughs> the three accountants oh, that <laughs> would not be good at my end at least I, I feel oh can you imagine how boring the research would be <laughs> <laughs> I mean accounting it's so I mean I have studied more math than I would like at university and still, I really can't get my head around how how economics, how, how the accounting can be made so weird and hard to follow. How can you make plus, minus, and percentage so weird? <laughs> uh, I have a... It's an amazing story, uh, and I crack up every time I think about it. Uh, I was attending a party of a friend and colleague of mine uh, who lives in another city. And he had invited a lot of his other friends, uh, which I never met. And we were sitting there and discussing back and forth. And I didn't think, uh, period. (laughs) And I just (laughs) thought that they were, since they were his friends, that they're always in like the shipping industry or something or not. And we had a discussion going. I don't remember what it was about but i ended up saying well i mean economics and accountancy is not rocket science and then my friend (laughs) just started laughing and the room became dead silent and everyone was working in finance (laughs) and then the engineer was sitting there and just well it's not rocket science (laughs) so it became kind of awkward but uh yeah we glossed over it and a few drinks later we were all back to normal (laughs) Didn't have to make one of your famous exits, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just do a mic drop and leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy counting my own money. And in macroeconomics, when you look at the economics of an entire count, country or, I mean, the, the really big stuff, that's that's rather interesting. But everything on the semi-small to medium-large scale, that's... Oh, that's so boring. Yeah, and it is. It is, as you say, it's It's not the numbers that's the problem, but it is the way they <laughs> approach them in economics. I, I have a small company, and then, of course, I have to do my taxes and so on. And my mother do the accountants for a larger company, and she's just teaching me the basics and it is so boring it i'm I'm really struggling (laughs) just concentrating and what she's telling me you have to do this because the rules are that and it's but that doesn't make sense to me and i mean why couldn't it just decide that uh money out is minus and money you get in is plus but no no it's the other way around unless you have to and you have to connect that account to that account 
but I only have one account. No, that's a bank account. This is another account. They couldn't even find two different words. I mean, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So maybe it is rocket science. No, they, they're yeah. just trying to, to make it look harder, harder than it is. So they, they actually need a job. And here, here well, I'm house. here I'm sitting and thinking, well, I, I can't spend money I don't have, but watching the media and the politicians and the companies, that is very much a business strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. how do I get big enough so I can start spending money I don't have? And then, of course, when you get big enough and you spend enough money that you don't have, then the banks can't afford you to fail so they just keep lending you money so it's a threshold there to get over so once i get this youtube business big enough i should register it as a company and then take up a giant loan buy a lot of stupid shit that the bank really can't sell to anyone else uh, and then i've caught them in this vicious loop and they just have to keep well they have to pay him I, they, he needs to break even at some point we hope. <laughs> well, what you could do is get lots and lots of employees underneath you, and then threaten to leave the country and take the employee, and you know, close and put all of these people out of work, and say you're not paying taxes like some of the larger companies do in this country. <laughs> yeah, but then there's the problem with uh, employees are often people. And I think we discussed that <laughs> in a latter episode. Then you have to deal with people. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, yeah, that's a no-go. So what you need to do is have a lot of CNC and lasers and other robots, and then go really hard for uh, AI being classified as a person. So you can, you can have the CNC <laughs> as an, an employee. <laughs> yeah. How, how many weeks holiday would your CNC get off a year? Well, I'm I'm generous, so I mean three maybe, yeah. And then, of course, <laughs> he he's expected to do all his own maintenance on that spare time out of his own pockets, of course. <laughs> I'm doing an American model. <laughs> I mean, doesn't he get uh, enough rest as it is? It doesn't work twenty four seven now, does he? Uh no. <laughs> so, I think for a CNC, it's a good life. Well, that depends on if you if you want to feel needed or be neglected. <laughs> Sitting alone in the no. workshop, no one to talk to. Well, it's, I mean, it's not alone. There's a router table <laughs> and a track saw. They are not getting a lot of mileage either, so <laughs> they can bond over that. <laughs> what kind of trash are they throwing at you behind your back? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> talking talking about the hand drill. He gets all the action. I mean, he uses him every day for everything. <laughs> Even the hammers are pissed off. <laughs> what the fuck? Hammering in a nail with a battery-powered drill? I mean, we're lying here. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, I even got more than one hammer. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, still not using any of them. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Actively avoid. I'm I'm actively yes. throwing out nails. I mean, they invented screws. <laughs> That's a really good video face idea, actually. What my tools really think about me? Yeah. Um, even when you put a nail in nowadays, I I'd reach for the nail gun as opposed to the hammer and the nail. <laughs> that that being said, I do concept. want a nail gun. I had one that was pneumatic, but it broke and. Of course, now you get the decent battery-powered ones. But, I mean, it's averaging two nails a year. So it's not yeah. uh, it's <laughs> it's not a priority. But still, want one. They look quite heavy, actually, yeah. don't they? Yeah. I want, want to be dragging that around. Yeah. I, um, I only bought a nail gun <laughs> when I was building the workshop for putting the cladding on. And... Um, the, the side of the workshop, I mean, I'm pointing right now, that, that side, is um, was made in four individual panels and then lifted into position. And when you got to the stage where you clad it, it was just great. I want to go on the nail gun. And my wife was, I want to do the nail gun. <laughs> <laughs> because it is rather fun. 
Yeah. It is brilliant. I, I got to know old used <laughs> nail gun. But it was really I couldn't find any nails for it. I don't really know what what it was supposed to have. Uh so I I, I had to buy some and, and grind uh, grind off the heads of them to make them fit. Because <laughs> I think it wanted some kind of nails without heads because I couldn't really find another way to load it. But so I used that for my uh, when I did uh, the small boxes, uh, uh, but it worked kind of worked. I think it misfired every every third shot or something like that. So <laughs> and then it and then it jammed did up. You... So so now I have to take it apart to actually make it work again. But it looks really good, but, but that... it works awfully. That being said, when I'm hammering in nails manually. I will more than every third just hammer them crooked and need to pull them out again and <laughs> or missing and hitting the material. So, I mean, one out of three is not bad. <laughs> and I'm thinking the pneumatic ones are, they are lighter and they are cheaper, easier on maintenance. And I think the battery one kind of lost traction because now I got a, a battery operated compressor. So I can just bring that with me outside and that's... Mm. Unless you're doing spray painting or like heavy duty, like seven inch nails, then it's more than adequate. And in the workshop, I also yeah. have a very silent compressor. So it's don't even need to have hearing protection while using yeah. it. So I have a really yeah, loud compressor, but it's great fun for spraying though. I haven't yeah. tried that yet, but it, it yeah. looks fun. Question: Just going back to your nails that you ground the heads off. Did you have to glue all the nails together as well? <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been. Oh, that would be a video. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I I actually managed to to they stuck together mostly. Some of them broke off, but yeah. yeah oh, they were all yeah, stuck well, together. Oh, okay. I, I bought the the, the kinds I thought. I, was supposed to to fit that that style, but I couldn't find anywhere to put them in where the heads actually fit. So I had to grind them down. I think I I might have loaded it backwards or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered anymore. I just I wanted it to see if it, I could make it work. And I thought you'd actually made a single shot nail gun, <laughs> <laughs> like a musket or something like, a... like that. <laughs> <laughs> Load some black powder in there. That would be really awesome. <laughs> well, I did find find that uh, that bucket of uh, hand forged nails before. Maybe we could do something with that. <laughs> hmm. Oh, getting back onto weaponry again, aren't we? <laughs> you could make your you could make your balls explode on impact. But I, I hope they don't actually. <laughs> that's that's my biggest fear at the moment that they will explode on impact. So yeah. We'll see about that. Oh, you're so childish. Oh. Oh. I'm the most grown up one here. Yeah, right. <laughs> For everyone listening, uh, my two co-hosts are now dying laughing. <laughs> it's it's like one hair strand away from me hammering it home with what, like with one. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to cut it here, Glenn, just put us out of our misery. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm dealing with children. Oh, where do we go from there? I have no idea. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's bring it down again with the regrets. Well, I thought I was a, a good boy uh, last uh, couple of weeks when I deleted a lot of raw footage, making space for new videos on my hard drive. And then I got cold feet, so... <laughs> Now, until I figured out what system I'm going for, I bought myself another external hard drive um, and now frantically going through my computer to try and salvage most of what I deleted <laughs> to restore it. So, yeah, 
I'm back on track. I uh, don't think I have deleted any raw footage as per today. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, How big drives do you yeah. have? Well, the last one is a five terabyte yeah. one, and it is a it's an external one, USB cable, so I can bring it with me. And then the two old ones, I'm now teaming together to form a backup function of that again. Nice, nice. But I got a, I got an idea for a YouTube video out of it because, of course, I do have a double backup of everything, but that doesn't help when it's in the same room. I mean, if there's a fire, if there's a flood, or one of the kids use it as an axe, then it's lost. So I'm thinking, hmm, should I have an outside box, fireproof, underground, uh, with uh, like a... <laughs> storage capacity <laughs> so uh I'm, I'm thinking of a pitch and if there is a way of making that into interesting video which will also <laughs> work for the intended purpose yeah that's that sounds like a youtube video i just have an external hard drive at work <laughs> that sounds way too yeah, easy i i i know I, I, I hurt myself it's too boring yeah yeah well, that's not no, going to make no. a good video. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I could make the intro a really good segue. And then when you're starting to get into the build, you could just bring it to our office. <laughs> <laughs> so is your biggest regret starting to um, delete the footage or your biggest regret admitting that I was right in saying that you probably shouldn't? <laughs> Have we... Have, have we had two Glenn, you're so wise and smart tonight? You know, one with the chainsaw and one with your footage. Yeah, uh, it didn't help with your wise words and uh, <laughs> possible use of old raw footage. Um, but I, I think I've come up with a compromise because I do. I don't scrub the clips for the ones that are failing. So I might try and film a scene and then I end up with 15 clips and then I just take everything into video editing and then I just scroll through them until I find the good one. Yeah. So I'm thinking all the good raw footage I will keep, but the ones where I just end up saying fuck and then I have to start re-recording again, I'll delete those. Yeah. And of course, that's the part where you can use for like funny bloopers at the end and so yeah. on. So it's 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 still hard thinking that I might delete those. Yeah, that would make a fantastic video. I think you should save it all. Yeah, but now it's a problem for at least next year because now I have storage <laughs> space, so I don't have to think about it until maybe March <laughs> next year. So. We were slightly talking about videos there, so I'm going to segue into, I've got a bit of a recommendation this week. So you know when you you start watching a, a YouTuber at the beginning of their journey, yeah. and then you follow, the long, follow them along and you see them grow and the videos get better, and then they reach a point where you think, actually that was absolutely bang on, you got the music right, they got the story bang on, the video footage, you know, bang on. And so I just wanted to uh, shout out Steve Bell Crates for his latest video, um, Second Life. I just thought he got it all bang on. And it's also seen him reach a thousand subscribers, which I think is a brilliant milestone as yeah, well. Nice. Congrats. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, saw, well done, Steve. Yeah, congratulations on that. That's a, I saw the milestone. That's uh, good fun. Is there anybody, anybody uh, any videos you've got your attention this week? It's too many to mention. Um, I, I seldom rec well. I seldom recommend videos to others, uh, but I did send you one today on uh, Patreon. Uh, it's the it's the CEO of Patreon. He had a really cool video. Well, until KJ <laughs> made made <laughs> me aware of that. I did not know he was the CEO of, of Patreon, but of course the the very sale pitchy <laughs> angle of the video <laughs> now makes perfect sense, but it was really nice. I've seen some of these uh, zoom in um, animation videos done before, but not in this like maker kind of setting. It was a really nice video. 
but it also got me thinking about Patreon. So, of course, I'm supporting others, but now I also made my own, which is not publicized yet, but I've at least made it so I have reserved the name. Mm. <laughs> nice. Uh, but then we are then we are back on to of course YouTube have the same functionality now that you can have like levels of memberships. But very much like when we discussed establishing this podcast, I easily strand on finding a good name. And then of course, okay, if you should have three membership levels, they should be called something and then it's like uh so that's where I'm stuck. <laughs> So maybe we should do a poll somewhere for names for the different levels. Just go with Howard, Glenn, and KJ. <laughs> Very healthy names. Yeah, you can put them in any yeah. order you think it's it's most most valuable. I, I was thinking about like the the Kazoo Band and then the Hellcorder Initiative, and then I thought <laughs> Hellcorder Initiative. The, the, mo- the awesome. most. Yeah, and the most upper level would just be wife. I mean, double view, <laughs> dot i, dot tab, dot e. And then I struggled finding what that should actually spell out as. But yeah, <laughs> then again, that that's a level where you can have only one entry as well. So <laughs> <laughs> You couldn't have the top tier and call it wife. I mean, that seems like you're promising something that you... <laughs> Yeah, it out. <laughs> yeah, and it would uh, it would cause some other problems when you are talking to it out of context, and people are like, did he just mention what? What? Ah, uh, no. So yeah, I, I I left that idea, but it it would be cool. Any videos you've enjoyed this week, KJ? Well, I I always struggle to remember what I've I've I viewed. Uh, that's a because it all all goes into a blur, and, and when people ask me for recommendations, I I always go back to to one that's really inspiring to me, and that's uh, Delbasid Timbers. Uh, Delbasid is uh, spelled uh, disabled backwards, because uh, okay. this is an Australian with uh, with one arm uh, who does turning, and in one one arm and no legs. Gosh. Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah, that's he, really he is a hundred percent charm, and it's amazing to see uh, what he his solutions to 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 awkward problems. How to to drive in a, a screw when you only have one functioning hand and that sort of thing. Um, wow. And he he does really really beautiful turning as well. So yeah, that's a that's a. Oh, fantastic. I'll check that out. Everyone should see at least one of his videos. Is he, yeah. He's Australian as well. I, I think one hey, of my got... favorite YouTubers are Australian. I made a thing. Yeah, I mean, he's great. Every, every time he posts a video, I'm really okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until I have a cup of tea ready and the kids are to bed and the wife is occupied with something else. So I really can just watch it from start to end. Mm. Yeah, it's latest the 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 Beyblade spinning oh, that's up. Terrifying. That's terrifying. So scary. Oh, that's uh I mean, even behind that wall, I just I could see it just making its way out the door. Yeah, and, uh, I wouldn't be standing that close. <laughs> no, I mean rotating machinery, high speed, high mass. That's. That's maybe the thing that frightens me the most when it comes to using tools as well. I've not seen that video. What's what's going on there then? Oh, it's like uh, it's a scaled up version of these Beyblades, which is actually a huge ass uh, like uh, circular saw blade, which he also okay. added some metal bars to it to add weight and then a huge spinning top. It, yeah. Oh, okay. And it tried making it like uh, almost supersonic. So we were spinning it up at like angle grinder speeds and then just pulled a quick release <laughs> and dropped it down to the floor with a lot of like shop mannequins and so strategically Jesus. positioned in the room. And it really wreaked <laughs> havoc and everything in that room. <laughs> 
Seems like a cheaper, easier version for BattleBots, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. I I really want to do a battle bot, but there's uh not to my knowledge, it's not a, a thing in Scandinavia. So you really need to travel for attending an event. Yeah, and I mean the all the the battle bots and robot wars and all of that is just such a dick mentoring contest for for engineers. And they they <laughs> put in so many hours and so much money that it 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 they wouldn't cost a really fortune, be fun. I mean, a, a, a scrap heap version would be would be fun. We would have a cap it on. You can only spend a hundred quid on it or something like that. Or yeah, and the weekend yeah. you meet up at Friday like a maker meetup, and then there's a uh, tournament yeah. on Sunday, yeah. and here's what you have to deal with. Yeah, that would be because nice. Because then it's low low stakes thought... and like yeah. Should we edit what, this what out? This is an idea we, that we should keep to ourselves, <laughs> and then we'll launch it. Yeah, we need something for our first <laughs> uh, listener meetup. <laughs> what about a? Uh, we could do a, a collaboration and uh, make a wooden one. <laughs> <laughs> we could call it the sacrificial lamb, <laughs> 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 or no efforts given, or something. <laughs> no. Yeah, no f. Yeah, and then we can fill it with rocket fuel, and we can say, "Well, we might not damage anyone, but the first one lashing out at us is going to get a hell of a surprise." (laughs) Put KJ's exploding balls in it. (laughs) (laughs) Your giant organ—it doesn't stand a chance. (laughs) Balls and the giant organ, so. What are you bringing to this table? Well, it's, got it covered, <laughs> it's all mouth, no tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a saying, isn't it? All cock, no balls? Or am I just making up things as I go? I've never heard it, but um... it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many ladies have told you that? <laughs> <laughs> That you think it's a saying. <laughs> what, what other sayings do you know, Pavard? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was. As really I'm thinking good. about it now, <laughs> too many, obviously. It's probably better that way round than the other, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what would be the meaning of that, saying that to somebody. Oh, he's all balls, no cock. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> There is a saying, all mouth and no trousers. Yeah, I think I've heard that one. Some more stuff to Google afterwards. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a fantastic search, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go for the image search. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Honestly, darling, I'm just doing research. <laughs> okay, first you need to listen to this podcast for context. And then once you've listened it, and I, then I can do some research. <laughs> oh, let's switch up. Have you got some? You got got your stickers ordered, yes. KJ? Yep. What about you, Vardy? Just stealing KJ's? Yeah, I think I'm <laughs> yeah. chipping in there. I ordered a load last night as well, even though I'm not going anywhere until May. That that you know of at the moment. Something might <laughs> pop up, and then it's really nice to have them. There's a, a woodworking show in York in the north of England in November, which I might nip to for the day, which would be nice. But I don't I don't think it's a sticker-giving kind of event. <laughs> Maybe I could just walk around all the stalls and over their brand name. For the- <laughs> because that's good publicity. Stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing some googly eyes to stick on things as well. That would be good fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. I actually did get into uh, thinking about T-shirts. I mean, for Maker Central next year. Mm-hmm. So I now have, I actually have a Hell Quarter T-shirt, but I should also do a, a more uh, YouTube channel uh, angle on it. And then it got me thinking when we discussed stickers yesterday, hmm, should we make a T-shirt as well? I mean, do that boy band theme complete 
Or we don't do, have to, to do t-shirts. The company I'm using, they're selling all kinds of stuff that you can put a print on. And I'm pretty sure they have these 80s uh, glorified uh, headbands or something. So um, if you want to go for the boy band style, we can do that. And you can actually take that off and go incognito if you get too much attention. <laughs> KJ had the perfect solution to having your own Maker t-shirt last year at uh, Makers, I do remember. He just stuck a sticker on his t-shirt. Yeah, that was the simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The crude but efficient style. <laughs> I just stuck a sticker on my daughter and sent her off for her <laughs> Makers Central. <laughs> Imagine the surprise for people <laughs> finding your channel as well. Hmm. She she looks much better in real life. <laughs> the camera really has a couple yeah. of pounds and grey hair and a beard. <laughs> I, I did also think about doing some, instead of putting your stickers up at random places, then is there other th fun things I can do? And I do have a surplus of casus. And I actually made... Um, uh, for my thousand subscriber, I actually made like a, a kazoo stand in uh, oak and uh, like with a plaque uh, subscriber number thousand and sent that over to the States. And I was thinking maybe I could do a smaller variety of that with uh, like kazoo and some small glass tube or some epoxy pour or something, except ex epoxy is now extremely expensive. Um, or s something just silly but funny and uh, w which you can leave somewhere or do something with. So, um, But I mean, it's, it's, it's May like... next year, so we have a lot of time to find up some stupid idea. I feel like your mind is your own worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since the day I was born. It's yeah. our best friend and worst enemy at what? the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a few years, but I, I've grown to be fond of it. It was a great idea. I, I did mean in the respect that it would just it's just adding to your workload, your ever growing workload. Yeah, but this being for next year. That's that's next year's oh, Howard's that doesn't count. problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's a really nice idea. I'll I'll do some chopsticks in a dome then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then KJ, what is your uh, entry? I don't think I have. Well, a you get you brand thing. <laughs> Please tell me if I do. Okay. Depends how <laughs> depends how his next video goes, really, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a it's a brand thing, but then again, kazoos are hilariously simple. Everybody knows what it is, and then yeah, it's no effort playing them. You don't need any skills or musical talent. <laughs> um, so yeah, what you should probably do is get a laser before then, really, didn't you? And then you could um, just engrave all the information on the actual kazoo. You know, I love the way your mind works. <laughs> yeah, that's a... I haven't thought about laser again this week. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were out of it. Yeah. You were looking a bit pale. I wondered if you'd sold a kidney to pay for the uh, laser the same as Manga Suslerin. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I was, after uh, last episode, I was thinking, uh, like, uh, hmm, I don't have any nicks and cuts on my hands at the moment, so maybe I should start giving <laughs> blood again, and then I could sell the Moomin cups <laughs> on an online marketplace and then get my laser in blood, yeah. Homemade uh, Marco contacted me and said what they left out of the podcast is that the um, people queue up for the Moomin mugs for a new release. And some of them can go for lots and lots of money. Yeah. yeah, And you have some small production batches. And I also think you have some production runs which have some imperfections in them. And they're going for like thousand, two thousand dollars a cup or something like that. It's insane. Yeah. And of course, you have the people that are needing to have all of them. Of course, they. Yeah. it's... 
is relatively easily to get all of the cheap ones. It still adds up to a lot of money, but then of yeah. course you have maybe three cups to complete your collection, which will set you back three <laughs> times what you already have spent if you can get a hold of one. I had a quick look on Amazon today and they're between 10 and 20 quid for a Moomin mug, but then they had this little pink Moomin mug, a couple of Moomins on the front. And then over the top, it said, sweet Moomin love, which just cracked me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you fancy some sweet Moomin love? <laughs> yeah, some hot love in a cup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. I started thinking, could we do something Moomin related? But yeah, then there's the copyright issue and uh, a lot of, well, I think, don't go there. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. Mm, <laughs> could you laser our logo into a Moomin mug? <laughs> but that would probably not go well. Just think of the value once it's been lasered with our logo. <laughs> it, would, it would go from 10 to 20 quid to yeah. 50p. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty steep decline, yeah. Oh, yeah, but laser, that is... Um, we got a confirmation from uh, our chosen contractor that they next week will probably start doing some digging on our lot. And that, of course, will then give me adequate space next year for expanding my shop slash container office youtube something and then of course then i have a place to have the laser but that costs so much that i don't afford the laser so it's a, <laughs> it's a bit of a catch-22 i don't think you need the nine grand laser for a logo though do you yes i mean you did say it out loud i mean you did say i, it I out want loud. to do a proper logo that is a small uh <laughs> I would like uh I would like to engrave my logo on the mantle in the center of the earth. So yes, I need that one. <laughs> Not those puny ones. <laughs> well, I heard the moon is a good good backdrop to. <laughs> what are you going to laser the moon? I mean into wood or something? No, I'm going to laser the actual moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, now the Indians have gone there and the next one coming there is, oh, who the fuck is behind the mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> the largest set axis in the world. <laughs> you could um, engrave behind the mistakes on the front of the moon um, and then on the back you could do your face and Havard. Havard is behind the mistakes. That might be tricky to uh, to engrave the back side or, of the or moon. You, well, you know, Man. I think it's going to be pretty tricky to engrave the front side of the moon if Ron is cage. I mean, if we're there already, then making the mirror <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to do the engraving on the back side should be the least of the technical difficulties. Actually, on the back side, you should write, KJ did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah well given the uh idea from last episode i was thinking maybe i should put my face into like a, a mobile phone case because the same company doing the t-shirts they also do prints on the mobile phone <laughs> case <laughs> so maybe that will do the focusing easier Weird. i've got my face on one of my drawers in my workshop so you know where your head is? Yeah. <laughs> when I first got the laser, I just lasered absolutely everything. <laughs> I Actually, that when I built the drawers in my workshop, they actually have small wooden tags, plywood tags on each of the drawers. Yeah. And the plan was, of course, to get the laser much earlier because I was planning on lasering in like a hammer on the draw where the hammers are and so on. But uh, I just ended up uh, writing numbers on them by hand until I get the laser and then I can flip them around and laser to the backside. Do you have a draw specially just for hammers? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to do that for my draws, I'd have to put Draw number one, full of crap. <laughs> draw number two, more crap. <laughs> miscellaneous. Yeah, that, uh, that miscellaneous yeah. is uh, maybe the most yeah. uh, 
Uh, that's not true. I got uh, actually crowbars <laughs> together with the hammers. Uh, and of course, I put my drills in the same drawers because, you know, hammers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it all makes perfect yeah. sense. It's, it's very <laughs> tough when everything is a hammer. <laughs> all the boxes is the hammers hammers smaller hammers bigger hammers electric hammers it's a it's a saying i remember my father always <laughs> said that if the only tool you have is a hammer all your problems become nails and that's a really good one yeah, yeah. Um, and then i probably took it too literally i think there's another podcast out there with a very similar saying isn't there <laughs> You'd have to, I've got one drawer at least that I'd have to label up with three screws, four nails, a couple of random bolts, <laughs> a piece of scrap sandpaper, yeah. probably a piece of litter because I couldn't be bothered to go out to the bin. I mean, that's really funny to have <laughs> proper label drawers like screwdrivers, hammers, and then it's just yeah. this one long list of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where, where some of the lines are, well, I don't know. It's uh, some squiggly bit. I think it's uh, some flat bit. I think it was from an old washing machine. I don't really know. Yeah. Second half bits of rope. Uh, <laughs> that's really funny now I'm doing the uh, the scrap wood challenge. And there's no secret what I'm doing. I'm restoring an old cheese slicer. And it has a cracked handle. And it's the the scope of the work is pulling it off cleaning up some gunk and then squeezing it together with glue and putting it back i mean it is a five minute job but i'm gonna stretch it into a 20 minute video (laughs) because that's what youtube needs yeah (laughs) are you not are you not gonna make a new handle no I'm, i'm i'm thinking outside of the box so i'm not only doing scrap wood but i'm also doing recycling so I might make an insert piece because I'm not sure if the wood has expanded so much in itself that I can't put it together. So I, I took it yeah. off yesterday and I have put it in water. So I'm going to see if that will mellow up the wood fibers enough for me to squeeze it back into shape. If not, I'm going to have to dry it for a couple of days and then slice it right down the middle and make an insert piece in some mm. contrasting wood or something. Most likely teak. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, uh, I, think... I, I saw Turgworks uh, posted uh, a brilliant video today. What is considered scrap yeah. wood or not? And then, ooh, <laughs> I might have a different definition. So we'll see. <laughs> he might as well just call an end to it now and give you the prizes straight away, hadn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just sent him a message, and I was fully aware that international uh, participants uh, is not eligible for the prizes, but I'm entering anyway. And then, well, there there might be some T-shirt that can find its way uh, outside the country borders. So we'll see. Well, if you um, if you if you did win, <coughs> you could always send the prizes to me. And I, yeah, I know, if you did win, yeah. <laughs> oh, you could be a front for us. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah you, I'll just look after it all for yeah, you. Yeah, and everybody just take a note here. He said, "Just send it to me." There was nothing about, and then I'll give it to you at a certain <laughs> point. It's like <laughs> you you didn't give me a chance to finish. Yeah, right. <laughs> just just send just send it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Then again, rather you than anyone else. So yeah, that's a sweet deal. Yeah, there we go. You see? But I'm not, uh, I'm not competing in the, <laughs> the prize league, so to say. <laughs> it's just I'm going for the participation trophy. <laughs> <laughs> he attended. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Best Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the Swedish maker as well have. Uh, he posted something indicating that he he wants to attend. Well, wouldn't surprise me. He did. He did. He did at least ask about uh, some international uh, possibilities of participating. So cool. You'll see him next weekend, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, they're doing a podcast live there. Yeah, I saw. You two. You two will just have to do hours without me. 
Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Should, should we uh, storm the stage and, and do a podcast takeover? <laughs> yeah. Make a scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or we can do a a live podcast recording, just commentating on their podcast. They're just sitting in a corner and just like <laughs> like low key yeah. discussing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. I like that idea. Can you repeat that? We didn't get it. Oh. <laughs> would you just repeat what they said, or would you commentate on the? Oh yeah, I, I like a copycat yeah. pod. We just. Do you want to be? <laughs> <up there? laughs> yeah. I think we might be drawing to like an it. end. We're getting... Far too silly. Yeah, but I think it's, gonna... it's now the brilliant ideas come. So uh... yeah, so we shouldn't record them. Yeah, we should, should just remember them. Are you going to do an outro live, or are you just going to wait until we've all gone again? <laughs> well, I can't wait, but uh, we have twelve minutes, so I guess we'll pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting about is there? I mean, it's a. Uh... It's been a great evening. Uh, we would like to thank everyone for listening in. Uh, it's been a blast, at least for us. And then hopefully you feel the same. And <laughs> if not, just hit us up in the comments because uh, interaction is what makes us better and uh, reach a larger audience. So yeah, thank you. Thanks. See you next week, I guess. Hopefully. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Jesus, that was smooth. <laughs>